Greetings. Welcome to the 10th episode of SMG Viewers Comments. I just wanted to give you guys an update on the channel and where things are headed. In the short term, I'm gonna try doing five videos in five days. It's something I've wanted to do for a while, yet I haven't been able to due to scheduling issues. This week, I just may be able to pull it off. I've got lots more coming up in the How to Record Heavy Drum series, as well as the first full episode of SMG Girls and Guitars. I really appreciate everyone who submitted music for that, but I'm quite shocked that most of the submissions don't have any real drums on them. I mean, what the hell's going on? Doesn't anybody record live drums anymore? If your band tracks real drums and would be like to be featured on an upcoming episode of SMG Girls and Guitars, please submit a link to the Spectre Media Face Group page. The link is in the description below. And for those of you who don't know, I've been doing a weekly news recap for MetalSucks.net called The Week in Metal. New episodes are up every Monday morning, and I take a look at all the big happenings in metal and make fun of them. So if you guys want to check that out, I've got a link on the screen right here. Oh, yeah. I got your message loud and clear because my ultimate goal is to grow this channel and not traumatize the viewers. I will not be wearing booty shorts upon reaching 50,000 subscribers. I got this message. Dude, I love your videos, but please, for the love of God, don't wear those shorts in a video. And many more like it. Judging by how many subscribers I lost, clearly it's something you guys don't want to see. Duly noted, and thanks for watching. And feel free to hit that subscribe button again. It's safe. I promise. I've never seen drums set up so far apart from each other with the longest cymbal boom arms ever made. Your drummer were playing pretty comfortable and peacefully, but I'd need broomsticks to hit those fucking cymbals. Yeah, I know that probably my comment is gonna end as next example of drummer's butt hurt on your next episode, but I don't care. Would love to see drummers playing fast on those drums or shots from past sessions when drum tracks were just right and you let the drummer play the drums his way. You know, I asked Mike Wisnuck for his feelings on your statement, and he said this. Anyway, it's a never-ending story on this topic. Sound engineers versus drummers. Typical sound engineer want to catch best sound quality. I guess would love to put each drum in different room for isolation if possible. And drummers want to play as comfortable and effortless as possible without thinking about sound quality. Probably without any click track, harsh words, and high five with the sound engineer after each day. But fuck my opinion as well as my English. I'm just a whiny bitching drummer. Well, man, I'm not going to mock you, but I did ask four drummers for their opinion on your statement, and they shared their thoughts. Stop making excuses, you pussy! Mentions the sunglasses, says nothing about the sword. Yeah, this sword in particular was given to me by a friend. It was in pretty rusty shape when I got hold of it, and it's definitely what you call a showpiece and not a real weapon. You can see it in action in the Game of Thrones spoof I did a few years back. the Windsor? I've seen them really cheap used. Are they any good? The PV Windsor is a Chinese-made Marshall clone. It doesn't have the greatest build quality and it's certainly not my favorite amp. It doesn't sound half bad, however. The only reason I bought it is because it was going for dirt cheap and I'm never going to take it on the road. If you're in a gigging band, I can't guarantee its reliability. I'd recommend finding a used 5150 or 6505 instead. I'd love to hear the story behind the no beer sticker. The story is fairly simple. I was recording a band and someone set a half full beer on top of my rack, which contains thousands of dollars of equipment and didn't bother to tell me. I turn around to reach for something and knock said beer over, spilling it. Needless to say, I wasn't very happy. I figured an easy to read sign in yellow and black might keep that from happening again, but I'm not gonna hold my breath. Because musicians are a particularly aggravating bunch. They love leaving little landmines for you to find because they just love making the job of making records as difficult as possible. They'll catch a cold and leave a pile of snot rags on the control room floor for you to clean up. They'll leave beer bottles everywhere. Not empty, of course. No, they leave just enough liquid of them to ensure you'll have even more to clean up at the end of the day. They'll spill things and not tell you and just so you can find a nice sticky patch on the floor. They'll leave garbage all over the place and then they'll get drunk, piss on the floor, leaving it for you to clean up and then they'll laugh about it later. Fucking assholes. 
Any comments, opinions on hydraulic drum heads? I had a good run wah drummer in the 90s in Seattle who insisted on them for his Thomas and had to wail on them hard to make them sound good, including rim wax, but the bottom line of drum tone was killing any competitors. I can't really say I'm a huge fan of hydraulic heads, to my ears anyway. It seems the thicker you go, the less tone of the drum you're actually gonna hear. On toms anyway, I prefer clear heads. Remo Emperors are my particular favorite. Here's a thought that just crossed my mind. I know you hate Easy Drummer, but I never heard you talk about this. Would you consider it acceptable using Superior Drummer if it's connected into an electronic drum set, which would mean the drummer is actually making beats and not just copying and pasting loops? Uh, dude, I think you missed the point. The problem with an electronic drum kit is that you're still firing off samples. Somebody else made those sounds. You get all the benefits of your drummer's shitty timing with none of the benefits of having a real kit in your room and the unique sound of your drummer. Look, I get it. Recording drums is fucking hard. Hell, I started out with a V-drum kit way back in 99, but I graduated to the real thing in just over a year. Stick around for my heavy drum series. It's just starting to get interesting. In this shout out, I want to mention Steve Bouchard over at Convergence Design. Steve's a killer web designer and brought my page, spectermedia.ca, back to life. He's done some amazing work on the Charbonno Guitars page as well. So if you're in a band and need any kind of custom website design, give Steve a shout and tell him I sent you. You can find him over at convergence.ca. The site isn't French, but he does speak English, so don't be put off by that. Anyway, that's it for this viewer's comments episode. Keep those comments and questions coming, and I will see you next time. Take it easy.